All right, so we're starting with olfaction. Again, this is a type of chemo sensation. So there are chemoreceptors in the olfactory epithelium, which is part of our olfactory system. These chemoreceptors detect olfactory molecules. Obviously a very simple schematic here. These could be these little dots that literally bind to receptors. It could be thousands of different molecules. We can smell a lot of different things, much more diversity than we can taste. Um, so here's just an example of some aromatic molecules, compounds that are found in flowers um, and three different ones found in roses, etc. cetera. Um, there's a lot of different chemicals out there that we can smell. And then there's also combinations that have different effects um, because of how our olfactory system works. Um, so we're not gonna go into tons of detail, but I wanna give you an overview of this. So if I can get it to switch slides here, which apparently I can't, there we go. Um, so let's dive into olfactory receptors and, um, and the organ. Now I have a different size than I tend to like. So here we've got the nose. You probably recognize that here. Um, and so it, it's actually olfactory molecules, odorant molecules are transmitted in inhaled air. So air is coming in through your nostrils. And these things here, these like lines, um, it's, it's actually three-dimensional. These are your nasal conchae. Um, they are adding the, increasing the turbulence of the air inside your nose. So basically we've got turbulent air in here. That's what this is. That means that it's going to flow around a whole bunch, um, turbulence and hit the olfactory receptors, be more likely to. It also warms the air, humidifies it before you breathe it in. So side note for respiration of what these nasal conchae are for. Um, for smell, we're going to go right here to the olfactory bulb. Oops, this is what I just drew on there, olfactory bulb. This is the main sensory organ. And this last line here, um, actually, I'm sorry, part of the bulb here, this lining here is the epithelium. I forgot to, so an epithelium, a lining, right, is the olfactory epithelium, which is a specialized epithelium that allows us to, de to detect smells. The last line here is going to be our olfactory tract, which is the cranial nerve, number one. So we're going to zoom in to right here, because this is where the action happens, right? This is where we're going to transduce smells into neural signals and have them be um, prepared to be transmitted to the brain. And this hates me, there we go. So zooming in, again, we're not gonna do all of the anatomy, but um, some important stuff here. First of all, here's our epithelium. This right here is our olfactory epithelium. Underneath that, there is some, oh, guess what? Lamina propria, connective tissue, areola tenesh, tenesh, connective tissue with blood vessels and um, axons passing through. There is a bone here, part of your ethmoid bone. And then this is the olfactory bulb. And you can see now there's stuff inside all this, of course. Um, so there are olfactory sensory neurons. That's important. What can these neurons detect? Chemicals, odorants. They're going to have, um, these are actually cilia here that are gonna be able to de detect. Um, there's gonna be chemoreceptors. That's what I'm trying to say. That's how they're able to detect. So these cells contain the chemoreceptors um, that bind the cells. And these cells are the ones that are going to transduce that 
stimulus into a change in membrane potential that then is going to be transmitted. See how these all combine together here? This is the olfactory neuron axon, as you can see. Um, there actually is a synapse before we get to our, this is our olfactory tract. So it's not the axons of the olfactory sensory cells that travel to the brain. There's a synapse here, and this is a mitral cell. So the olfactory tract is actually the axons of mitral cells. This synapse here is actually called a um, glomeruli. I'm not gonna label that because I don't have that as your key terms. Okay, so that's, that's the basics. Um, I'm gonna go into more detail for mechanisms of chemoreceptors for taste. So this is the level of detail I'm gonna do for, for, for odors. The last thing I wanna do for odors is tell you what happens, wh where this goes. So where are we gonna go when the olfactory tract enters the brain? We are going to go, oops, oops. I do have this, forgot. Okay, um, I, this is how, <laughs> Um, odorant molecules are going to transduce their signals. Um, it is a simple, some more simple than taste, only one mechanism. So I do want to um, cover it here. And this is, this is review of your G-coupled protein receptors. So odorant molecule is binding to its receptor. Um, the chemoreceptor is what this is. It's a G-protein coupled receptor, right? G-protein coupled receptor, you can see that right here. Um, this G protein's activated. So that's actually what's happening here. G protein activated. And the G protein stimulates, what do you think this is? This is adenylate cyclase. This is the pathway that you know. Um, adenylate cyclase is activated. Adenylate cyclase converts ATP to CAMP. Right, so we have CAMP, our second messenger. One of the effects of, sec of this of CAMP, um, and the, the main one for this olfactory pathway is to open CAMP gated cation channels, CAMP gated sodium and calcium channels. So this is going to open a channel. Um, when this channel opens, calcium and sodium flow into the cell. Why? you know why, down there electrochemical gradients. This is going to cause depolarization. This is in the olfactory sensory neuron, right? I told you that's where transduction occurs. This neuron is going to release glutamate to signal the mitral cell this mitral cell is going to project to the brain. The axons of the mitral cells are the optic, I'm sorry, olfactory tract, olfactory nerve. Here, here that is. So here is olfactory bulb. This becomes the olfactory nerve. This is the direction of those pathways. So the unique thing about olfaction is we're going to the amygdala, and other places in the limbic system before we even get to the thalamus. So olfaction can trigger memories, emotions, which are involved um, related to the limbic system before you're even aware of it. And that's thought to be actually probably a key purpose of olfaction is more emotion memory type of um, senses versus we'll get to taste is probably more like a survival, like what's poison. This signal does eventually travel to the thalamus and then um, onto some other places as well, prefrontal cortex as well. But the key, I think thing that's unique is this limbic system projection um, before anything else.